Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Elena. So welcome and I hope you guys are here to stay. And today's video is going to be an update, finally, for my Hoya Latifolia Pot of Gold. I have filmed a video on it about a year ago and finally we're doing an update, you guys. I know, I know it, it's been a while. <laughs> But I had a few setbacks, one of them was root mealybugs, and then we all discovered flat mites, so that's why it's been a while, but I think I'm ready. This plant's right here, been sitting for about a month on my dining room table, so I guess today is the day. I'm finally gonna update you on all of those cuttings that I've made. Also, we are going to be potting them up, which is exciting. If you guys wanted to check that video out, I will put it right here in the corner. If not, here is the short rundown on that plant. So basically, I have a large Hoya Latifolia Alba Marginata and one of the vines turned into pot of gold and that vine continued growing pot of gold so I ended up chopping it up making seven cuttings I believe plus I had a little stick and now that they've been rooted for a very long time they are grown quite a bit I can finally show them to you guys and we will pot them up together finally. I've had seven cuttings. I only have six here to show you the reason why, because one of the cuttings I gave it away a long time ago to my plant friend, but I'll show you what I have left. So Hoya number one right here, all rooted as you can see. I hope you guys can see it, but it's a pretty large plant at this point. I have four leaves. I have pretty long vine right here. And there's also new leaves starting up right here. Cutting number two is right here, you guys. Also grown quite a bit. There's five leaves. There is a vine with another leaf forming right there. And I have lost some in the process just because, you know, flat mites. <laughs> but it's okay. These plants are clean. They don't have any root mealybugs. They don't have flat mites. All good to go. Cutting number three right here. Also four gorgeous leaves. Again, another vine right here that's still growing. They're pretty big, you guys. They're pretty long vines at this point. Cutting number four. Also beautiful, as you guys can see, they all continued pot of gold. None of them reverted at all. I believe this is cutting number five right here. There's four large leaves, vine, and a new growth. And the last cutting I have right here, it's huge, you guys. It is absolutely huge. But look at this, you guys. This cutting is enormous. There is two vines at this point. I don't know if you guys can see the second one right here. This one have quite a bit of leaves. Very, very long vines. So they definitely need to be potted up, all rooted. And if you guys wondering what happened to that little stick, I will show you right now. And it's the cutest thing ever, you guys. If you want a miniature Hoya, obviously it's gonna not stay miniature forever, but if you guys want tiny, tiny leaf Hoyas, grow them out of sticks because that's what's gonna happen. So right here, that was that stick and that video that I propagated. One leaf did revert and it's completely green. Actually two of them right here, which is totally fine. I don't really care. But this one is definitely pot of gold right there. And look how tiny they are. It's absolutely adorable, you guys. You want miniature Hoya? Put this stick in the soil. <laughs> And just in comparison how tiny those leaves are compared to a regular latifolia, right here, they are side by side. I mean, it's tiny, you guys. It's absolutely adorable. I'm just gonna keep this guy around. Uh, I'm not gonna repot him or anything. It's gonna stay in this tiny little cup. It's rooted quite a bit, but it's it could stay in this cup for a lot longer. Just gonna keep him, he's adorable. Now that I've showed you all of those cuttings, it's definitely time to pot them up. First of all, I don't necessarily want to take care of six more plants, you guys. I rather put them all in one pot and cut it down to one. And on top of it, these vines are getting so long, it's very hard to keep them in my tiny little containers here because it's hard, they get caught on everything. So we are finally doing it. 
I'm so excited. <laughs> and it's great because I get to show you how I'm gonna do it. I guess let's start off with the pot that I'm going to use for these Hoyas. I chose a pretty large pot, which is right here. It looks to me that it's about eight inch pot. It does have a drainage hole. It's not glazed inside, which is great. My Hoyas seem to like this kind of pots. You probably thinking, Elena, this is way too big, and it is, but I am putting six cuttings all in one pot. That's one. And of course, I'm gonna have to be very careful to water those plants because it's gonna be a lot of soil for the amount of roots in that pot so but i've done this before but i need a large pot i need a deep pot because i will put them on the trellis right away and you guys have seen the trellis that i make for my hoyas you've seen that on the mother plant which is regular latifolia alba marginata and it worked very well was i nervous about the pot size yes did it work out yes because you just have to be mindful of your watering only until the roots grow big enough and fill up the pot and that's why i like that this pot is not glazed because if there's extra moisture it will wick it out so it's a little bit of security there for that let's talk about soil that i'm gonna use as i've mentioned before numerous times that i don't grow hoyas in my propagation medium i mean you can grow them in it for a while actually they'll be fine as long as you fertilize them in there they'll be totally fine but my propagation medium is also meant to hold a lot of moisture that's why i like to pot them up into a regular soil mix i'll show it to you guys briefly nothing special in here i don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see it it's really just regular soil which is i like to use a black gold brand for house plants i have a charcoal in here i have perlite i have orchid bark and also you guys see some fibers in there that's a cocoa chunks and the chunks that i purchased a few years ago and i still have quite a bit it's not just chunks it's also have that cocoa fiber in there so i just throw everything in there it's draining enough it works so i'm okay with that and that's what we're gonna be using today for potting up this hoy. What I'm gonna do first right here, and I will probably adjust my camera so you guys can see what I'm doing, but what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna get them out of these cups, get all of this medium out. Some of you were wondering how long do I keep them in in my propagation medium before I transfer them into a regular soil. You could see right here right now, that's a good amount of roots to transfer your plants into the soil. I mean, you can do it sooner, you can do it later. It all depends on the size of the pot that you potten it up. Like I said, you can grow them in this medium forever and they will be fine as long as you fertilize them. I guess let's adjust that camera and start taking the stuff out. <laughs> all right, you guys, I feel like my frame is crooked, but that's the best I could do at the moment. The best thing to do is actually not water them before you're gonna pot them up because it's gonna be a little bit harder for me to get that medium off of it. But when it's completely dry, it turns light brown color and it's so easy to get it off. You just shake it off, it comes right out. I watered them last Monday and today is Friday, so it's still, they're still pretty wet. I would probably wait it for a couple of weeks to repot, but we're doing it today, you guys. Let's do this. There is one in there that I have. It was dry medium, I believe. I will show you how much easier it comes out. But you do want to remove all this stuff just because, like I mentioned before, this medium holds a lot of moisture compared to the soil that I'm going to use. 
so you don't necessarily want inconsistent like too much moisture around the roots and the rest is not so definitely try to get as much as possible off i do usually water this hoya every two weeks even in those tiny little cups because leaves are so large and they hold a lot of water in them so they definitely did not have enough time to dry out you guys all right guys so this is the best i could do and it's pretty large root ball right there so that looks pretty good so in this little cup it's much drier medium that you saw previously and i'll show you how much easier it is to get them out see it just crumbles off just comes off super easy and you just tap on it and it all all goes away so if you guys propagating Hoyas in the same medium as I do, make sure to let them dry out and you can see how much easier that all came off. Here is another one, also very large root ball. Hoya number four. Roots look pretty good. They're all very healthy and white. And that's what you want to see in the roots. They have to be light color. Otherwise, if you see darker roots, that means there is a root rot. So everything looks very healthy, very good, you guys. Two more to go. Okay, here is another one. And this is the last one, you guys. The big guy. And don't worry if you don't get all of the medium off. It's okay to leave some behind. Obviously, you just don't want to leave as much as this. This one not as wet, so it's a little bit easier to remove it. And here's the last one. There's so much roots on this Hoyas, you guys. They literally filled up probably most of the cup at this point. In the perfect world, I would probably repot them much sooner than that, but it's okay, we're doing it today. There we go. That's the last one. And we have quite a bit of medium here. And you guys, feel free to reuse the medium if there is nothing suspicious in there now that all of my plants cleared off next step is we're gonna put soil in my pot but before i do that i will put a little mash disc in there just to cover the hole so this way soil is not sipping through it and what i'm gonna do i'm gonna take some of that fluff or cocoa fibers and i'm gonna throw it at the bottom of the pot just for extra drainage at this point. I'm just gonna fill up this pot. As you can see, my soil is very airy, you guys. So when I water my Hoyas, water just drains right through pot very easily. And that's how you avoid a root rot, you guys. So I'm gonna put quite a bit of soil in there because we have a large pot and those Hoyas are still pretty small, but as I've mentioned, having six plants in the pot, that's obviously helps. I would never ever put just one cutting in such a large pot immediately. That would definitely be death sentence for that Hoya. I filled it up this much right here. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna place these guys in there. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to put them kind of all the way around but not in the center of the pot since I'm gonna put a large trellis the type of trellis that I'm using you guys it's a great trellis for this particular Hoya because if you guys have latifolia at home you would know this is not an easy Hoya to trellis it just I feel like those hoop trellis they just don't work on this Hoya you guys can see my other videos when I used to have it on the hoop it just did not look right it just wasn't working at all i've been really liking just one stick straight up trellis for this hoya i'm making such a mess on my dining room table you guys this is terrible i play in dirt all the time we got one more to go you guys and this one have the smallest amount of fruits i'll put it in here now that they are in a pot we're gonna put a trellis in there and it's a very tall trellis i believe they are four foot tall and that is the reason why i did not want to put them up in the center of the pot there we go and that's the reason why i wanted a deep pot also 
because it's a wooden trellis and it is quite heavy. So you want to make sure you have a deep enough pot to hold it up. All right, to secure the vines, I like to use a Velcro tape. It works great. I'm cutting up pieces about this long, so it's enough to wrap around my trellis and the vines. I don't know how many I'm gonna need, but at least six, since I have a six vines in there. And we're gonna start securing them, you guys. The reason why I feel that it's very hard to trellis this Hoya, because vines don't really vine or loop around that much. They just like to grow straight up. And that's probably why they usually look pretty messy around loop trellis. I adjusted my camera so you guys can see better how I'm securing them. Do you guys hear all this tap, tap, tap? Well, that's my dog. Needs to go potty. <sighs> I'll be back. All right, let's continue. There we go. This one is closer to the trellis. Try not to break any leaves because those leaves do break off pretty easily, you guys. And when you guys do this, make sure you don't put Velcro over nodes. So this way you're not squishing new leaves that's gonna try to grow from those nodes. I feel like trellising Hoyas is never an easy thing, you guys. So what else you can do? This is a good example. There is a tiny little vine right here. It's too short to reach the trellis. So what I do is I just take a little bit of tape. I just tape it to another vine and it works. Now that they are upright, I'm gonna fill up a little bit more soil just to make sure there is no gaps. All the roots are covered. All right, you guys, all potted up and it's looking beautiful. I will show it to you guys up close in a minute. So normally I would water Hoya after I repot it, but in this case, because the medium was so wet and this Hoya does not need any water, and if you feel those leaves, they are very firm. I will not water this Hoya for a little while. I will probably wait until the leaves start feeling a little bit softer and then I will water because if I water this Hoya right now, I will overwater it and it will die. So I definitely don't want to do that. I'm so excited it's finally in the pot. It's been here in the making. It's insane how many setbacks I've had before I could actually make this video and I'm happy that I finally can get them off my dining room table like i mentioned before they were on here for about a month because i've been planning and planning and trying to film this for you but i finally did it and before i show you this plant up close i feel like i need to address my inconsistent lately video schedule <laughs> and i feel like you guys need to know the reason why my videos became a little bit more inconsistent this year because I've been kind of dealing with some health issues at the moment that I'm trying to address. So it's just a lot of doctor appointments and running around for now. So some weeks I'm just not able to make videos for you guys, but I'm trying my best and I will continue making videos for you guys. The only thing is consistent when I do come out with my videos, it is still on Mondays at 11 a.m. And shorts, you know, shorts, I just throw them out there when I see something cute, they do come out kind of random. So if you guys don't want to miss any of my videos, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and also don't forget notifications bell that would definitely be helpful until my schedule gets more consistent again i hope you guys enjoyed this video like share and subscribe and i will see you guys in the next one all right you guys here it is next to the mama plant very very cute i think it turned out really nice look at that nice and full that's why i wanted to chop it up to so many pieces so i can make a nice full pot out of it and here is my trellis they are very very tall you guys they are four feet tall and the good thing is i'm not gonna have to repot this plant probably ever <laughs> which is very nice here's the quick view of the mama plant she does have a little bit of sulfur on her so she's a little messy but i want to show you guys this leaf right here so it's a little update for you it is absolutely insane how big this is so mama plant is doing well 
she is waking up from dormancy at this point you can see some of the new growth right there and it's basically kind of starting up everywhere and there is some bare vines yes because you know flat mites but here they are side by side you guys looking great and i think they will grow quite a bit this growing season